Hello, everyone. So um, I think just for interest sake, I would like to show you how I do the 16 personalities test, just so I, I can describe how I would answer each question. All right, so let's share the screen. Okay, let's go. You regularly make new friends. This is a, a hard one because in the past, I would struggle to make new friends. But if I had the opportunity, and if I felt comfortable with the person, I would probably want to make new friends. So I'm gonna go with slightly agree. All right, next one. You spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. Hmm, also a tough one. Um, I will say I do like trying to listen to different kinds of music, even if it's completely off the wall or crazy. Although it's usually within certain genres, like for example, if I'm in the mood for Japanese music, I will play Japanese music. Or if I want to listen to um, Adele or Ellie Golding or whoever, I will listen to them. But I guess you could say it is slightly random. So I'm going to say I slightly agree with that because I, I do know what I like, but I am very open to, to try different options as well. So I'm going to go with, I think, this one. Agree. Seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry too. Yes, definitely. I remember I was in church and I was a counselor for someone and the, the tears were flowing and it and then I felt like I, I wanted to cry too. So I definitely agree. You often make a backup plan for a backup plan. No, I don't. I struggle with making backup plans and I always regret it later. So I'm going, but I have learned to do it, but I definitely don't think I'm good at it. It's something I have to work on. So I'm going to say disagree. You usually stay calm, even under a lot of pressure. I tend to get easily upset or annoyed or stressed out. I'm only really calm if I take my, my, my pulse. So I'm going to say disagree. At social events, you really try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. I do tend to talk to the ones I know already. Unless someone comes up to me and they talk to me, then I will, I will talk to them. It's not like I don't talk to, to those people. So this is actually a, a kind of a tough question. I would say I slightly agree. You prefer to completely finish one project before starting another. I'm not sure. It depends on the project and if it's important. Um, I think I tend to focus on one thing at a time. But if I'm unable to solve the problem, I will move on to something else so long and try to fix that so long. So I'm gonna say slightly disagree. You are very sentimental. I am very sentimental, yes. Oh uh, yeah, definitely agree. You like to use organizing tools like schedules and lists. Um, I have used the list when I had to, to, to do some, I had to um, cr uh, create some tests. Because I'm, I'm a teacher. So I definitely use the list there. Although I don't normally use the list of schedules. But it does help. So I would say I slightly agree. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Uh, yes. Um, like for example, my dad will tell me to, to do pull-ups. And then I'll tell him, no, I can't do it. Because I can't do it. It's hard. So I, I think I, I agree with that. Yes, I definitely agree with that. I, I, I tend to, to doubt myself a lot. Mm. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Mm. It depends on where I'm at and if I'm comfortable with the person. If I'm at church or youth, I think I will... I will definitely say hello to someone if they happen to come across my path. 
But there are times where I'd rather walk around them. It depends. It depends on the situation. So I'm going to say slightly agree. You are not too interested in discussing various interpretations and analyses of creative works. I think analyses of creative works is very interesting. I remember when, when I did visual arts, we always looked at the meaning of the artwork. We looked at the design of the background of the artwork. Like, for example, if it was like this, or it had like three pillars, for example, it would signify um, a separation of different elements in the artwork. I found that very interesting. So I definitely disagree with this. I do find it very interesting. You are more inclined to follow your head than your heart. I think mostly, I mostly follow my heart. I can follow my head if I need to. I can be quite logical. For example, sometimes my dad will, will tell me something that he will exaggerate. I'll say, no, that's not true. Logically, that's wrong, you know? But generally, I tend to follow my heart more. I'm very compassionate and caring and kind. So I'm going to say disagree. You usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning a particular daily routine. While if I'm required to plan a routine, I will do it. But if I don't have to, then I probably won't. I'll probably just do, do whatever I want to. So I agree. <laughs> <clears throat> you really worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. Mm, yeah, I agree. I, I normally don't think about that. Although I must say, I do tend to stutter sometimes and that does make me a bit self-conscious. So I'm gonna go with the middle one. You enjoy participating in group activities. It depends on the people in the group. If the people are willing to contribute to the activity, then it's wonderful. But if I'm the only one talking, then that's really annoying. So I'm going to say slightly agree. <laughs> you like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. Yes, I think so. I think so, definitely. Your happiness comes from more from helping others accomplish things than your own accomplishments. Well, I think both are important. I think you have to congratulate yourself for a job well done. But of course, I'm always happy for other people if I do well too. So I'm going to say neutral. I think both are important. You are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. Um, that's true. I, I've noticed that whenever I go on Netflix and I want to watch a new show, there are so many options available that I'm not sure which option to choose. Or well, sometimes I will not like anything at all. So it depends on the situation. But I, I have this thing where if I'm in the shop and I want to buy something, I always get stuck between two options. One, both of the options look interesting. And I'm like, I really wish, wish I could combine both into one flavor or something, you know? So I would say I agree. You are prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. Uh, sometimes if I'm under stress or if things go really badly or if there is a potential for things to go badly, I would say yes. But I don't try to look for the, the, the devil behind everything all the time. I'm going to say slightly agree. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. Yes, I do. I don't know. I, I feel like there's so much uh, pressure to be a leader and people expect so much from you and they have all these yeah, high standards that if you mess up, then they look down on you and they don't like you. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to be me, the mean one or the bad guy, you know? So I would say I agree. You are definitely not an artistic type of person. I definitely am an artistic type of person. I love art, even though I don't really make art anymore. I, I think throughout my life, I've always been someone who, who loved drawing and painting and making art. And I also loved photography a, a lot until they stole my, although they didn't steal my camera, I lost my camera. So yeah, <laughs> so I definitely am artist. You think the world would be a better place if people relied more on rationality and less on their feelings? I think rationality and feelings are both important. I don't think we should place one over the other. You need both to survive. Because if you're just rational, there's no passion in your life, and you, you, you are insensitive and you step on other people. But if you rely only on your feelings, 
then things will, will never get done and you won't be able to focus on what is logically important. So I would say both are important. So I'm going to say neutral. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. It depends. It depends how I feel on that day. If I'm doing chores for, for my mom or dad, then I will do my chores if they ask me to. But there are times where I don't want to. There are times where I am busy doing something fun and then my dad says, please clean the stairs or sweep the stairs. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> but then if my mom asks me, me to come and, do, come and do my chores, I will do it. I'll just tell her I'll be there just now. And first I finish my hobby I'm busy with. So I probably would say slightly more on the side of relax. Yeah. You enjoy watching people argue. Mm, I find it quite cringe when people argue. Although I, I personally tend to argue with uh, with my family members sometimes. But to watch someone argue is, is quite different. I'm not sure about this one. Mm, I'd probably say slightly disagree. It can be interesting if people are debating something. I find that interesting. Because both have something to prove and they have all this evidence and stuff. Like if they're in a court of law or something. That's quite interesting. I'm going to say slightly disagree. Pretend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. Mm, I don't really care what people think about me. I'm like, whatever. Let them look, you know. So I'm going to say disagree. <laughs> Your mood can change very quickly. Yes, I'm, I can be quite temperamental. I can get angry just like this. Just like this. So, and that tends to bite me in the back a lot. Yeah, so I agree. You lose patience with people who are not as efficient as you. Mm, I try to be forgiving with forgiving towards them, but it does annoy me a lot. So I'm going to say in the middle, agree. You often end up doing things at the last possible moment. Yes, I agree. You have always been fascinated by the question of what, if anything, happens after death. So I do believe in the afterlife, and I do believe that we... If you're a Christian and you are saved, that you go to heaven, and that's very interesting to me. I do find the afterlife very fascinating. I always wonder uh, what life is like after death, um, what kind of life we will live after after we die. And um, yes, I think it's very interesting. So I'm going to say I agree. You usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. I can be on my, my own for a long time if I'm busy with something interesting. But after a while, I do like it if my mom my mom or dad or brother is home and I have someone to talk to about my day or I ask them how was their day. So I definitely think I'd like someone to have someone with me. It doesn't have to be a large group of people, but just some people is fine. So I agree. <clears throat> you become bored or lose interest when the discussion gets highly theoretical. I'm very interested in personality theory and uh, cognitive functions and stuff. So I wouldn't say I get bored with that. I love it very much. I disagree. You find it easy to empathize with a person whose experiences are very different from yours. Well, empathy is when you have the same experience as someone, I would say, rather than a different experience. But um, I am very empathetic, I would say, definitely. So yeah, I agree. You usually postpone finalizing um, decisions for as long as possible. I kind of want to get things over and done with. I don't like to wait that much. But at the same time, I can be very indecisive. So I'm going to say neutral because I'm a bit of both. You really second guess the choices that you have made. Hmm. I think I second guess sometimes. It depends. It depends on the choice I'm making. If, if it was a good choice or a bad choice. I'm going to say disagree. After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. Yes, I do like lively social events as long as the people there are friendly and, and nice to talk to. And I don't feel excluded. Definitely. Yeah, agree. You enjoy going to art museums. I haven't, I haven't, I've only been to one art museum in my life. But it's definitely interesting and very fascinating. Yes, I love art museums. Agree. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. 
No, I think I'm quite good at understanding people's feelings. Disagree. We like to have a to-do list for each day. Only if I have to. But if I don't have to, then I don't really care. So disagree. You really feel insecure. I have felt insecure uh, quite a few times, actually. So I'm going to say disagree. You avoid making phone calls. Uh, I generally don't like making phone calls. Simply because people always um, mistake my voice for, for a lady's voice, which I don't like. I know my voice can be quite high, but anyway. But um, I have learned to make phone calls uh, because, because I have to make them sometimes. But if I could choose, I probably would rather text someone or send a voice note even than make a phone call. I don't like phone calls. I'll only find my mom or, or a friend or something. Yeah. So, agree. <laughs> Let's say this, yeah. You often spend a lot of time trying to understand views that are very different from your own. Now, I always try to see the other person's perspective as much as possible, but there are times where I don't, I don't do that, and I'm like, I am right and you are wrong. When it comes to my, my dad saying I should wear my clothes a certain way or I should buy those shoes, I'm like, no, I don't agree. So it really depends. But if they make a valid point, then I think it's fine. So I would say I agree, slightly agree. In your social circle, you are often the one who contacts your friends and initiates activities. I don't really have a social circle at the moment. But looking back, I did always try to talk to my, my one friend and ask her how her day was, even though she wouldn't always talk, um, talk to me immediately. I will always try to ask someone how their day was and stuff. So I think so, yeah, agree. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as possible. It depends on what the plan is and if it's important. Like if, if I have a plan, if it's at my work and I have to get something done and someone interrupts me, I, I don't think I'm that high strung about it. I think it's okay. It doesn't really bother me that much. But if it's an important plan, then it does bother me. So I'm going to say neutral. It depends. You are still bothered by mistakes that you made a long time ago. I try to not focus on my past mistakes, but there are times where I get flashbacks, where I think about something cringy that happened. <laughs> it's quite funny. So I would say occasionally. Occasionally, yes. You rarely contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. Um, no, I think the meaning of life is interesting. And I do contemplate the reasons for human existence quite a lot, actually. Yeah. So I'm going to say I disagree. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Well, I used to be very emotional, like extremely emotional. Um, I think then because I'm taking this uh, medication lately that that's made me calmer, I'm much calmer than I used to be. But um, in general, I think I'm quite an emotional person. But I can also be quite rational and logical. I'm going to say slightly agree. You take great care not to make people look bad, even when it's, it's completely their fault. It depends. It depends, really. If it's a stranger or someone in public, I will not try to make them look bad. But if it's, <laughs> if it's a family member, even if it's a family member, I don't think I would go out of my way to make something like that. So I would say I agree. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organized and consistent efforts. I try my best to be organized and consistent, but sometimes I will forget to do something. It just happens, you know. I think it's just human nature. So I think I'm generally more spontaneous. More spontaneous. But I, I always strive to be more organized and consistent where possible. I'm going to say I agree. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. Hmm. Depends on the person. It can be slightly, slightly at me. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. Uh, I think I prefer working with people. People are more interesting. People are more interesting. So I'm going to say I disagree. You believe that pondering abstract philosophical questions is a waste of time. Depends on what the, what the philosophical questions are. 
Like I've read some philosophy where they say life is meaningless. I'm like, no, it's not. Life definitely has meaning. Maybe it feels meaningless at that moment, but there's probably a purpose behind that, you know? So I think as long as you don't do it in the sense that you say, oh, there's no meaning or you contradict yourself all the time, please don't do that. As long as there's a purpose behind it, I, I think there's quite value in that. So I'm going to say disagree. You feel more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmospheres than quiet, intimate places. Depends on how I'm feeling that day. I generally do like, like it if they play music music a lot music is cool and if there's something nice to eat and drink and the people are friendly and laughing and we're talking about life that's quite nice so i would say i agree but as long as it's not too loud or too noisy you know at first glance how someone is feeling if i look at their facial expression perhaps i could see how they're feeling like for example my dad will frown a lot but i think perhaps that could be Due to age, because he is in his 60s now, so that could be it. I would say I agree. You often feel overwhelmed. I can be overwhelmed by loud noises. Or if 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 people shout at each other, that's very annoying. I hate that. So I would say I agree, actually. Yes. You complete things methodically without skipping other instincts. I try to be methodical, but sometimes I skip other steps by accident without meaning to. So I'm going to say I slightly disagree. You are very intrigued by things that are this controversial. Depends on what it is. Depends on what it is. A part of me thinks it's interesting, but if I'm having a discussion with someone about something controversial and they want to tell me I'm wrong, then that's quite annoying. I'm actually not sure about this one. Um, I'm going to say disagree. You would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. Depends on the opportunity. And if it's, if I'm really desperate, then I probably would try to get it myself. But if I knew the person and I knew that I really needed, needed it, and I was sure that I would get another opportunity later on, then I probably would let that person get the opportunity. So I would say I agree. You struggle with deadlines. I can complete deadlines. I'm not terrible at it, but I do feel like I'm under a lot of pressure and stress. I'm stressed a lot of the time because at my one job, they were quite hectic. Like every week we had to we had deadlines every week. And that really, really took a toll on my mental health. It was really stressful. So I would say I agree because of the stress and the pressure. Even though I am capable of completing a thing before the deadline. It does put stress on you. You feel confident that things will work out for you. Sometimes, sometimes not. So I would say slightly agree. Let's see my results. Okay, so I got the campaigner, the ENFP. This is a type I get often. It makes a lot of sense to me. Cool. Campaigners are enthusiastic, creative, and sociable free spirits. You can always find a reason to smile. True. I always try to find a reason to smile. <laughs> so I'm 61% extroverted. Extroverts, extroverted individuals readily enjoy group activities and value social interaction. They tend to be outwardly enthusiastic and express their excitement. I, I love to express my excitement. 80% intuitive, quite high. Intuitive individuals are very imaginative, open-minded, and curious. They value originality and focus on hidden meanings and distant possibilities. I'm very much a dreamer. I have a huge imagination. I'm always curious to learn something new or something different. And I try not to, to limit myself. Yes. Feeling. Feeling individuals value emotional expression and sensitivity. They place a lot of importance on empathy, social harmony, and cooperation. This is definitely something I value very much. I think it's important that we show empathy to one another as much as possible. Always try to understand where the other person is coming from. Yes. I'm 77% feeling. 
So I'm mostly feeling. I'm also quite sensitive. And I think it's important that we cooperate. Prospecting. So in MBTI, this is also called perceiving. Prospecting individuals are very good at improvising and adapting to opportunities. They tend to be flexible non-conformists who value novelty above stability. Definitely value novelty very much. I tend to get bored in conditions that are too stable. That's true. I mean, while I do want peace of mind, I do, sometimes that gets boring. And sometimes I want, want to shake things up a bit, you know? And I like to be spontaneous and I like to try new things. I like to explore new, new types of foods, maybe get a different haircut, different clothing, buy different things that are interesting, have awesome experiences, very much. And then turbulent. I'm 72% turbulent. Turbulent individuals are self-conscious and sensitive to stress. Yes. I get anxious very easily. That's something I actually need pulse for. Yes. <laughs> they feel a sense of urgency in their emotions. Yes. And tend to be success-driven, perfectionistic, and eager to improve. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily success-driven, but I do want to get things done very much. Perfectionistic, I do have high standards sometimes of a small things, not really big things, but small things. And I'm definitely eager to improve. That's true. Cool. There we go. So that's my, those are my test results. Okay. Right. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.